Welcome to Why is for Youth on the Political Trenches Local Government at Work. Our guest today is Frederick Beadle, the former mayor of the township of Narm and Hyam, Ontario. Frederick is a trailblazer in the realm of municipal governance. Elected at the tender age of 19 as a councillor, then elected as deputy mayor by his council colleagues, and then subsequently sworn in as mayor of his community in early 2022 after the former mayor resigned. Frederick's journey stands as a beacon of inspiration for aspiring young leaders across the nation. As this show is about getting more youth involved in politics, I want to start by asking you, what motivated you at such a young age to enter the political realm at the municipal level? Yeah, so um, growing up, I mean, politics was always kind of something that I had an interest in. I had... uh, pretty intuitive parents that would uh, talk to me at the dinner table about, you know, this party stands for this and who's the leader of that party and difference between federal and municipal and provincial at a, at a very young age. Um, and then what really got me into it is I did a program uh, in Ottawa in grade 11, which is called Forum for Young Canadians. And uh, that program had used to have, I you know, after COVID, it's changed quite a bit. But I uh, used to have three weeks of uh, about 100, over 100 students each week, stay in a hotel in Ottawa, uh, you know, kind of live the days of an MP throughout uh, about a week, uh, go to the Hill for a question period, all that kind of stuff. So I, I came back from that pretty inspired, um, wanting to volunteer with uh, certain members of parliament or um, members of provincial parliament. And so from there, I really started getting to think, okay, well, what, what's the next step here? So then I, I did my um, political science degree at Carleton. And from there, yeah, I, I started volunteering on some campaigns. I started uh, volunteering in Ottawa with my MP. And it really, I, I got so interested into it. And then um, and then the flyer came out. Uh, you know, the town that I represented is only about three, 400 people. So uh, the flyer came out and it said calls for uh, calls for candidacy is is coming in May. And I thought hmm, this might be an opportunity to get my foot in the door and, and live it uh, at, a, at a very small level, but at least live it. Um, you know, I, I always have aspirations at some point to to go uh, bigger than that. But um, for now, yeah, I, I had my four years under my belt there. So um it, it's just kind of steamrolled more and more ever since i was a young guy so being involved at the municipal levels but particularly as someone as young as you were when you first were elected did you face any challenges at the doorstep when trying to approach people to say hi i'm frederick i am looking for your vote in this upcoming election and when people did talk to you were there any concerns that your age would be a hindrance to potentially serving on council yeah, so I, I had a couple, there, there was two general expectations at the door. There was someone who said, great, you know, we need this kind of thing. We need a youngster in here, somebody that you know, understands the, the issues that face young people in the community. And then there was other ones where it was, oh, are you even old enough to vote? Are you even like, how does this work? Um, so I mean, I, I I don't blame them. I was pretty uh pretty baby faced knocking on their doors. So, um, and then at one point, I I had knocked on doors with a with a longtime counselor, and they said, "Oh, is this your son?" And and they, you know, no, no, this is a candidate. He's running, and and I'm supporting him as well. So, um, it it was interesting in that sense. But yeah, I, I mean, getting to the doors and getting my name out, and getting signs there, um, what was a big part of just letting people know I'm a young person involved in politics and I, and I want to make a change in my community and look no further than me for a to seat on council. And, and I think I, when I first got in, I attempted to revitalize some things that the older school counselors had been doing for a lot, lot of their terms, uh, longer than I was born, they were elected. So um, a lot of that was kind of dying and so trying to revitalize that and just having somebody with a little more energy and a little more okay I'll sit on this committee I'll sit on that committee was you know really worked to my advantage to say I'll I'll do all this and I'll do all that and and uh you know try and try and get some fresh blood in there really 
I'll, I'll take over a bit from there. You had made a reference to about having helped out or volunteered or at least been interested in other orders of government as well. And by the way, a generation ago, I went to Forum for Young Canadians as well. In my uh, must have been grade 11 or grade 12, I suppose, too. But why municipal rather than jumping straight into provincial or federal uh, elected office? Yeah, I think I think municipal is really accessible for anyone who wants to put their name in, right? It's pretty simple. You go down to the town office, you put your 50 or 100 bucks in or whatever it is, and you get your name on the ballot. I think to me, I saw that as an accessible, accessible avenue to get my foot in the door. There was no party affiliation. It was just grassroots ideas. And from there, I kind of realized, okay, municipal governments are responsible for way more than people think. And, and it's really the stuff that affects you every day. I mean, you know, I think when I think about it, it's, you know, your municipal politics or your municipal policies, you know, your garbage doesn't get picked up or your streets don't get plowed. You're going to notice that more than what the feds or the province is doing. So to me, that really reason why I got into politics was, you know, someday I just, just want to change a person's life or make it better. You know, it, it's when someone just says, I have this problem and I need you to fix it. That's to me, what was the attraction of that? Because when I picked up the phone, it was a very small municipality. I mean, most uh, most residents had my phone number, personal phone number. So I'd pick up the phone and they say, well, this is going on. What can you do about it? So I think that was that was mostly my motivation to to get myself into municipal politics. And then at that point, I was able to to meet, you know, people from larger cities and and meet with uh, provincial uh, members of parliament as well. So, um, yeah. You mentioned a few moments ago about people not necessarily realizing the depth and breadth of what's actually involved in local government. Sometimes that that awakening extends to elected officials as well when they're first elected. So after a year, say, of being councillor, was the job what you thought it was going to be? And if it was, fantastic. But if not, what was the biggest difference between what it is and what you expected? I think it definitely was what I expected. I mean, I, I was the nerd in high school that uh, was looking at the minutes and the agendas of, of, uh, of local government. So it's definitely what I expected. Um, there was definitely some things that, you know, came up and I thought, oh, geez, didn't, didn't think we were in charge of that or this, this, that, or the other thing. But um, it was, it was also, it was also surprising of how much people cared at the end of the day sometimes too, because I thought going into it, you know, not a lot of people care about this stuff, but at the end of the day, it was like, whoa, okay, there's really small, minute issues that people care about versus something way bigger, like a budget meeting. You know, there was, there was really a focus on smaller issues. Um, but no, it, it was it was basically what I expected. Um, I, you know, I expected to get a little bit of flack for my age at some point. And, and yeah, you know, whatever, there was, there was some people out there that were a bit doubtful about my age, but um, politicians have to have thick skin. And I learned that right, right from the get-go in my campaign when people said, how are you going to do it? Um, so that was a challenge, but getting there and sitting there and once once uh, I felt like I had a seat at the table, it took a while to say, you know, I, I deserve here. I, I belong here. I was elected. I had tied for the most votes out of all the councillors. I was the deputy mayor, and by the time uh, a couple, you know, about a year in, I was chairing some meetings, um, and then that that steamrolled into three years in, and the mayor resigning, and me getting a phone call in my first year of law school saying, uh, hmm. "Well, you're the guy for till we decide," and then you're the guy after we decide now too. So, um, yeah. An interesting little segue then to that is so you you as you mentioned you were appointed as deputy mayor and then you took over presumably as acting or interim, but then were selected to be the mayor as well. What was the biggest difference or the biggest surprise for you moving from being a member of council to also taking on that role of mayor? Yeah, so it was uh, chairing meetings and um, and it was a lot of liaison between. You know, when when I was on council, it was, you know, you're informed and you're you're making suggestions and you're maybe putting uh, policy suggestions forward. But for 
for the mayor role, it was a lot more administrative than I thought with the liaison between council and staff and staff and community members. And we luckily had two great uh, staff people in the office that knew all the ins and outs and and really helped me along the way. So, I mean, it, it was it was just that it was more administration than I thought. And it was, uh, we're going through many projects. So it was, it was difficult sometimes to chair a meeting with, uh, lots of people in the crowd when, when tensions are high or, uh, when there's a big decision coming down. So that was a big factor. And it was just that it was that extra step where I said, you know, I'm, I'm three more years into it. I'm three years older. But everyone still sees me as oh the guy that got elected at nineteen. So that was that was still a challenge. Um, but yeah, it, it was fairly just more administration and more phone calls and meetings is what I always used to say. But so, so I I don't want to just go back to the that those meetings where people just saw you as that nineteen year old. But we're gonna have to for this show because we're talking about youth and politics. Why don't you think more youth get involved? municipally because we are seeing and i'm speaking as someone who talks to municipal leaders from across canada and ian works with administrations across canada more and more young people not going into the local arena the political arena and more wanting to focus their attentions provincially territorial or even federally what what is the reason behind that do you think as someone who made that leap in 2018 to run municipally yeah i mean municipal politics is is not it's there's no fame and glory really associated <laughs> to it at the end of the day i mean i don't know why there's there's a push for younger people to go that way uh to me it was just it was such a great entrance door to get in there and and uh to put my name forward and say this is who i am and this is who i stand for and i'm trying to help my community but at the end of the day, I think it, it really just comes down to a lack of interest in general. Like I said before, so many people don't even know, know what different levels of government do and don't do. Um, so I think really at, at, at the head of it is there's a problem of just young people getting involved in politics in general. Um, you know, in, in high school in Ontario, we have a civics and careers class. And, and I think the whole civic system needs to be blown up and redrawn from the start uh, to, to get more people interested. The it, it, There's just not enough people to get younger people interested. And, you know, the, there's, there's resources and there's avenues for that, but, you know, every party's got a youth wing and every party's got uh, under 25 or under 30 membership, that kind of stuff. But it really, I had some great mentors at the, the federal and the provincial level. And I also had a great mentor at the municipal level. And that really mattered because that person had been on council for 20 years and, and really showed me what it's like and what, what types of things get discussed at meetings. And if you don't have that person or that contact at local government, or you don't have parents bringing you to council meetings, you're not going to be, you're not going to be interested in it. You're not even going to know you're not, it's, I don't know. How can municipalities make that that olive branch extension to the next generation? Because we're the average council is not 35 and younger. The average municipal councillor is about 45 and older, and that's pushing it saying 45 and older. What can municipalities, particularly the councils of today, do to extend an olive branch to the younger generation, to your generation, to the generations who are in grade 10 civics classes right now to say, come join us, come see what you uh, municipal council does? Because like you said at the beginning of the interview, our impact is greater than what you think it is. Yeah, so there, there's a few things. Um a lot of bigger municipalities will have a mayoral advisor advisory board of sorts or a youth council. Um, youth, youth councils are great. Uh, it's a great way to have a group of like-minded individuals that are about, you know, it really depends on the size of the municipality that are informing council and sending them reports and, and feel like they have a seat at the table. The, that, that is a great aspect of getting youth involved at this level. I believe the other thing is that 
the stigma of young people in politics needs to be removed from the older generation. The older generation, you know, I hate to say it, but sometimes they they still think politics is an old boys club. And, and, and really, and if you look at it across the board in Canada, it's really changing whether we have people of color on councils and women and younger people that needs that whole stigma needs to change when i was on council i'd always wear shirt and tie and and a suit and i and i would get heckled for that and so where like the lines of professionalism within saying hey you have this you have a seat at the table too has to change because if the older people are still going to be putting down the younger people when someone else sees what I did or something like that, if they said, oh, well, he just got, you know, he just got put down the whole time. No, thank you. Um, but there, like I said, there was great people as well, but there was also always those voices, always the negative that, you know, you're too young, you can't do this. So that, that really needs to change. Um, and, and alongside with the youth councils, it's, it's really changing in that aspect, but not a lot of municipalities have great resources to develop that or, a specific staff person to develop that. So I, I mean, I, I attempted to try one uh, even with four adjoining municipalities when I was on council and it, it just, it couldn't get any traction. So sometimes in the smaller municipalities, it's, it's really tough to kind of find those people that are really interested in it. So before I throw it back over to Ian for a second, we will be talking about an organization that's near and dear to your heart. The reason why I found you, which is the Youth Council Coalition of Canada later on in this interview. So just we'll, we'll loop back to that before I throw it over to Ian. Ian, go ahead. <laughs> sure, thanks. I'm interested in some of the networking piece that you had talked about. Did you, uh, while you were elected, whether on council or as mayor, did did you ever reach out to people around your age in similar roles to compare notes, or did you ever find that people are around Ontario or around the rest of the country may have reached out to you for collegiality or advice? Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, when I first got elected, we were pre-COVID, so I had a chance to go to the AMO conference. Uh, I think only one of them uh, during my career. So uh, in that, they have a youth um, council under 35 elected officials uh, gathering of sorts for an evening. So I made great contacts uh, throughout that. And we we kept close uh, th through whatever our four years and, and beyond. So there's, there's definitely a network of people that are under that 35 threshold. And really they're under 35 is, is quite young in politics. So it, it was great to have that. And yeah, I, reaching out to them and then also having so many people reach out to me and say, wow, like, this is awesome. Didn't know we can do this. And and really trying to motivate some people to, to throw their name in. It's, it, you know, like I said at, at the start of the interview, it's you go down to city hall and you write your name and there you go. Right. So it, it's, it's definitely a daunting task when you first look at it, but some of the smaller municipalities can really benefit from a young person. Sure. You, uh, in some of the background we looked at for you, you're, you often speak about it during your time as being one of Canada's youngest mayors. Were you aware of anybody else who was kind of in a very similar situation to you, or your age or younger, taking on that particular role? Um, not something yes. we've run across. Yeah, so um, from my research, I know I was may probably, I don't know if it's out there, the youngest deputy mayor in Canada. Yeah. Uh, one of the youngest mayors. I don't think I'm the youngest, uh, but um, no, I... I, I didn't didn't cross paths with too many uh people that were kind of in that same situation um the municipality adjoining to me the town of espanola uh they they just had uh aiden Kilioni. he was elected on council at the age of i think 19. uh so i talked to him prior to him putting his name in the ring and all that stuff so uh it was great to have another person uh literally 15 minutes down the road in Northern Ontario, which was, it was great to see, but um, yeah. For those who are listening and hopefully a uh, counselor killer only is listening. We're trying to get you on the show. So check your <laughs> inbox. There's, there's my little shameless plug right there. <laughs> Um, I, I do want to go back to that perspective that you were talking about. Oh, you're just a young guy. You're not, you're a young person. You're not going to be able to do anything in your opinion. And this is you talking right now. 
What do you think the experience of a youth politician differs from those of a older generation, the sort of the old boys club generation that you talked about? Is there experiences that you bring to the table that that generation doesn't because they were young once too, and they just got elected 40 years later than you did? <laughs> yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, it's all perspective. Um People that are 60 or 50 or 40, when they come to council, they're going to have a different perspective from someone who's 10 years older, 10 years younger. Um, I had a perspective of like really hammering home on recreational activities. We're a small northern community with with uh, kind of losing our community aspect. What about, you know, the outdoor rink? I grew up on that thing. Why aren't we paying more attention to it? You know, there was a lot of things that just get lost in the shuffle. And if you don't have that perspective on it, they'll continue to get lost in the shuffle. So I think when I came to the table, yeah, there was, you know, still roads that needed to be redone and still infrastructure to, to look at, but from a perspective of well, let's build a community here. What, why aren't we having events? Why aren't we doing this? Well, we don't, we don't have anyone that's interested in it. So it really depends on what your perspective is, it is and what your interests are. Because the older generation said, oh, I did that 20 years ago, and now it's your turn kind of thing. So it, it really depends on perspective, but yeah, really. Do you see a role of technology and social media being a barrier to youth getting involved in politics? And for the, for transparency's sake, for those who know me on the show, i have been honest, uh, I said some disparaging things when I was a young kid. Alcohol was involved and it came out during a federal election, which made national headlines across the country in the 2015 election. And it didn't end my political career, but it pretty much did end my aspiration of ever holding elected office. Do you see more and more people who are constantly on social media, particularly the youth, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or X, or whatever you want to call it these days, Facebook, saying, I, I'm never going to get elected because of things that I've done in the past or things, pictures that might be out there? Yeah, I, I think that's that's a big fear in this day and age, right? You, you never know uh, what's on the internet, really. It, so, I mean, sometimes, yeah, I mean, for sure, that could be a big fear for young people in terms of just seeing some bigger political people go down for, for things that they said 10, 10, 15 years ago, or a certain picture of with so-and-so or whatever it may be. So, yeah, it, it's a fear for sure. Uh, but I think it's also the bigger thing where, what are you posting that's going to bar you from running or bar you from a... Uh, media media news story right so i think you know everyone's got to be careful no matter how old you are but um yeah it's definitely a fear yeah i uh, thank you for that um i want to turn to the youth coalition council youth council coalition of kent i want to make sure i get the name correct here um can you explain to Ian, myself, to our viewers, what is this organization? Because when I was doing a deep dive, uh, I know one of the people, Kelsey Santa Rosa, who's been on our show as well, uh, is a great counselor for the municipality of Lakeshore. But what does this organization do and how does it advocate for more youth involvement in politics? Yeah, so uh, Kelsey had started the whole thing with two of her friends down in uh, Windsor area. And I had joined on the board of directors uh couple of years later. And yeah, we're, we're just very small uh, board of directors just trying to locate uh, youth councils and, and just contact them and, and know that let them know that we're there for more resources and help. A lot of the time when these youth councils start up, um, they don't have a sense of like something as simple as making a delegation to council or having agenda and minutes for their meetings and stuff like that. So it's it's really just a resource based uh, support group that we're trying to to gain membership across Ontario to start and and possibly Canada if it could ever grow that big. But really, it's just about supporting youth councils because when they like I said when they when they start, some of them have no idea in what direction to go and and who to market to and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, uh, really garnered a, a, around that. You were quite young when you started down this particular municipal path. You were in school, you're still in school. 
Um, did that have, was, was there any kind of direct correlation between what you were learning uh, through your poli-sci degree and now into your law degree and how you could apply it to your municipal experience, your real world experience or vice versa? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely every day uh, now in, in law school, I see things that um, I can go, oh yeah, I saw that on council. And <laughs> and during my, uh, for Lakehead, we have to do a, a practice placement in our third year. So I had done my practice placement at a firm in Thunder Bay and uh, I did, I ended up doing a lot of municipal law and, and just having that background and, and, and easing myself into it. It was very easy to read a bylaw and, and, uh, you know, advise, advise through a lawyer, what the municipality's next steps were. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the other way around too, I mean, learning at Carleton about all these sort of different stuff uh, surrounded political science, I definitely took some things with me, but um yeah, I would say more now that I've that I'm out of politics, I see so much that I either could have applied when I'm in politics or now that I apply in my my professional life now that I'm out of it that I learned uh learned at the council table. So you did leave, obviously. You didn't you chose not to run in the, the last municipal election in Ontario. Why was that? Well, I was uh in Thunder Bay for the last year of my uh my mayoral ship and uh yeah it, it just became a lot i knew that the next two years of law school were going to be busy and uh the travel from thunder bay to naren center was a little more difficult than ottawa to naren center and just uh being being in the community as much as i wanted to be wasn't a realistic aspect um and and just life got in the way i guess so yeah, that that was my main reason. I would have loved to continue if uh, geography and education uh, weren't a factor, but that's ultimately what ended up happening. All right. So you we took the boy out of politics. I suspect we didn't take politics out of the boy. What's next? The man, the man, Ian, the man. Yeah, yeah, He's now man. About it. The staying. <laughs> um. What's next? Well, I uh, write my Ontario bar in June, so I will be a called Ontario lawyer, hopefully by the fall of 2024. And uh, yeah, I just I want to uh, develop myself professionally for the next uh, little bit, um, but eventually get involved at, at the federal or the provincial level or, or even municipal. I'm, I'm not shy uh, from that. So mm -hmm. at some point, uh, I will hope to put my name in the ring uh, down the road. Don't know where, when, how that's going to happen, but uh, definitely in the back of my mind. And it, and I think politics, I some days I read the news and I open the news and I go, oh boy, that is not for me. And then some days I would read and open the news and go, oh yes, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So it really, uh, it's really going to depend on uh, life scenarios in a couple of years and where I'm at and who I am at that point. So uh, but definitely down the road, I do want to get involved at more of a higher level, but uh, to be determined. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel, Ian and I have chatted with many former mayors, former councillors in our time, and they often say that they try to stay out of the weeds of what's going on in their former community, their former municipality, their former riding federal or provincial politics. Do you ever find yourself looking at that old agenda saying, I, I, this is how I'd vote or this is how they should be voting on this issue or not? Yeah, I, I find myself uh, <laughs> cheating on the, uh, on the municipalities website every once in a while and see what, see what they're doing. And, uh, and uh, when I was home last, I went and visited the, uh, the staff and, and chatted with them and got the, uh, got the scoop on council for the last year or whatever. So yeah, it, de it definitely creeps in the back of my mind and see what they're doing and what they're building upon or what they're tearing down or uh, whatever that may be. So, so I, I want to focus on the future now because we're at the almost at the end of the interview here, and I want to make sure that you get some downtime because you're a busy stu student and you probably have well, I think you said forty eight days left in your semester as of recording this. So we want to make sure you get some time to relax. 
what advice would you give to the next generation? Now, you are a unicorn in essence, because you are someone who, and I've used that line a few times, that's why Ian just chuckled there a little bit, but you are a unicorn in some sense, because you get elected at a young age, you become deputy mayor, the one, one of the youngest, if not the youngest in all of Canada, you then become a mayor of your community, and that is a no small feat in itself. Your path in municipal politics and politics is unique, and you are the only person who can say that they've done that what advice would you give to that next generation that person that young boy young girl who comes up and says frederick can we sit down and have a conversation about your time because i want to be the next frederick for my community yeah i think there's two things get informed and get involved early so what i mean by get informed um read the news read uh read parties bylaw books or, or policy books, I mean, as nerdy as that sounds, really knowing what each party stands for and how that adds to your values as a person, as a professional, and and maybe as a politician is really important. And obviously, the municipal world doesn't have party lines, but sometimes the party lines creep in when you're sitting on council and you, you can kind of read the room on who stands where. But if you're informed, then you can get involved. If you know what the issues are and if you know who stands for what, that kind of sort of thing, then you can get involved. And if you really are really enjoying a certain party's position, reach out, reach out to those people. Most of them, like I said, have a youth wing or have an MP that's really good with young people or have somebody that's within the party that really wants to harbor and foster this kind of young talent. It can take you places and it can make you lots of connections and it can, it can really expand your mind and open your world into that area. But first and foremost, you have to get informed and you have, you know, know who the players are, know what the issues are, and then you can get involved. And, and that's really what I did at the end of the day. And I, and I, and yeah, I got involved at a very small level. Um, but it, it opened my world to so many different possibilities and so many different ideas that I can't stress enough how important those four years were in my life in terms of development, really. Frederick, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from Ian for sitting down, taking time out of your business schedule to do this. That was probably the best way to end an interview that I could imagine. And we appreciate you doing this interview. I can imagine talking municipal politics with two people from Alberta on a Canada wide show is probably not what you had in mind for a Monday afternoon, but we appreciate you taking time to do this. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Fred.